Dear Mr. Ripto, after listening to Silly Pediatricians number 39, I came across a paper that recommends increased skeletal loading, specifically during the adolescent growth period, as a way to prevent bone loss later in life. Sincerely, Brian Lovgen. And Brian attaches the PDF to this thing. He has some quotes from the paper. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a, uh, a thing that we have talked about several times. Uh, and this is what is wrong with pediatricians. Pediatricians don't seem to understand. I mean, they're, they're particularly bad at understanding the simple nature of the stress recovery adaptation cycle. All right. Uh, like, for example, the standard deal where, you know, you don't let your kids lift weights. It'll stunt their growth. It'll fracture their growth plates. All the stupid shit pediatricians say about kids and advice that people have for kids. Do you have any right? idea where this growth place I have shit came from? No idea. Because I hear that all the time. I have Even no idea. Even people who are on, on board with lifting weights, they ask about the growth plate. You know, I, I don't know. Nick, I have absolutely no goddamn idea where that came from because if it were true, you'd see a whole bunch of people running around with one leg, That's right. you know, this much shorter than the other leg, one arm that much shorter than the other arm. Yep. And, and it just it doesn't happen. When a kid breaks a you know, tibia or something, it breaks at the growth plate, doesn't it? When a kid breaks a tibia, when a kid fractures a tibia, the growth plate fractures, yes, because that's the weak spot in the tibia. And guess what happens to the growth plate? It heals up. It heals, right. Just like everything else heals up. So how would we... Now, we, growth plate injuries might very well account for a lot of short leg, a lot of leg length discrepancies. But, with, when but we, it's never a two inch. But it's never inch. two inches. No, it's always in the in the order of a centimeter or something like that. Okay, yeah. fine. I mean, it's just welcome to the planet, yep. you know. But uh, what this paper is talking about is is bone density. And why do you think that the great big white kids that play football for Nebraska are so good at that because they hauled hay while they were 12. That's right. They were loaded. They're big farm kids, and they've been doing heavy lifting since they were tall enough to be kicked out into the front yard. All right? If lifting weights hurt you, hauling, hauling hay hurts you too. And guess what hauling hay doesn't do? Doesn't hurt you. Picking up heavy stuff doesn't hurt you. We're, we, I mean, if picking up heavy stuff and doing heavy shit was bad for you, we wouldn't be here. Right. We would have been become extinct a long, long time ago. Our little delicate asses would not be around right now. That's why but Nebraska produces football players and Iowa produces wrestlers. Yep, because these big kids. old fucking farm kids up there, and. Uh, you know, because their parents aren't, you know, infested with this silly pediatrician bullshit where all kids are delicate and they're supposed to just sit in the chair till their growth plates fuse when they're 25. <laughs> can, can you imagine that? Does this mean that pediatricians are advised against kids playing football? They sure as hell don't. I don't think they do. No, I don't think they advise against that because they'd all be out of business. And they, they're you perfectly know. okay with letting them play soccer, which is the soccer. most dangerous thing that a kid can do. Soccer's just in a fine. Lot of yeah. Instances. Little eight year old kids running head on into each other on the soccer field. That's fine, right? But squats below parallel <laughs> growth plates. Growth plates, stunt, gr stunted growth. They'll be, you know. To be that tall, because they they lifted weights when they were kids. Like all of, you'll notice that all the all the kids we've had in the gym yeah, that lift weights have all immediately stopped growing. Have you noticed that? Like Chase, yeah. when I started you know playing, Chase is only four foot three. It's the camera angles. Yeah, I mean he he was four foot three when he came in the gym when he was twelve. Well, he's probably a little taller than that. What was he four eleven, five foot? But he stayed there. And he hadn't grown, yeah. hadn't grown at all. I've coached 12 year old kids. kid. Yeah, I coached three kids 
And in the year I've been coaching them, I went from being a full head taller to them, and they are all a head taller than me. <clears throat> Three kids. Well, they hadn't heard, you know, they, they pediatricians. Heard that, they haven't heard about the stunting of growth that pediatricians all seem to think occurs. Yeah. Oh, God, I've, I've said this. but The most preposterous shit I've ever heard from medical professionals, and of all the preposterous bullshit, that medical professionals say the most preposterous bullshit I've ever heard has emitted from the mouth of a pediatrician. You people ought to be ashamed of yourself. If I was as bad at my job as you are, I would be homeless. I'd be starving to death. Snot would be running out of my nose as I stood in a doorway begging for food. God almighty, get some fucking perspective. Oh, shit. Yes, when, you, when your kids, look, when, you, when the kids lift weights, when the kids lift weights, the subchondral aspect of the long bones densifies. The, the bones get denser and harder, and those changes tend to stay through adulthood. The most sturdy people as adults were the kids that did the things that required them to be sturdy when they were adolescents. Please keep this in mind. Let me, let me, sug let me suggest a book that maybe all of you pediatricians ought to read. It's called Skeletal Function and Form by Carter and Dupre. Skeletal Function and Form and form by Carter and Dupre. Learn your profession for the love of Christ. 